Hi, Elaine here from MarkerGeek.com. I've got another Stamping Bella card for you today. Um, I'm showing the full card making process for a fun summer beach scene shaker card. Uh, as usual, um, this is me filling in um, for Sandy over on the Stamping Bella blog for DT Thursdays this month. And um, Sandy has a tutorial on the Stamping Bella blog from a while ago where she made a fun underwater shaker card using one of the Stamping Bella stamp sets. Uh, I went ahead and just created a fun little shaker card of my own but I will link to Sandy's tutorial in the description below and in my blog post which will also be linked in the description below uh, with all the product details and all of the other information for you with links. Um, so I chose to use some of the stamps that were released last summer, um, the Littles, a whole, as you could see at the start, a whole bunch of um, stamp sets were released last year with these cute Littles characters. I chose to use the Littles Sandcastle set uh, for my card, along with the beach backdrop. Um, I stamped the beach backdrop on Strathmore Bristol smooth surface paper um, because I knew I was going to work with the Distress Oxides to colour the background instead of using Copic markers. Um, it just makes it much faster and a less stressful process um, sometimes in terms of getting that blending for the sky etc. Um, right now I'm stamping my images which I'm planning on die cutting so I'm stamping these on Make It Colour Blending card, which is my preferred card for Copic colouring, because I know I'm going to Copic colour these images uh, to pop up on the front of the card. Uh, and now you can see that I've grabbed my Distress Oxides, and at the moment I haven't masked this. You will see shortly that I realise that actually in order to do this, I do need to make a mask. I was trying to be lazy and kind of avoid making a mask. I was like, yeah, it's going to be fine. You can just be really careful. So that worked fine for the sky area because that's fairly simple. There's no rough bits to kind of, there's no weird little nooks and crannies to get into. Then I realized that, yeah, when I started on the C, I was like, yeah, no, this isn't going to work so well. Um, so I actually stopped and grabbed my masking paper, my Eclipse masking paper, and quickly created a mask so that I could mask off that sky and the beach and do the sea and then mask off the sea and do the beach and not have any kind of weird contamination of areas and yeah. So yeah, don't be me. Make the mask from the outset. <laughs> um, yeah, I grabbed a couple of different colours for the C area as well, just so that I could create just a little bit of variation in colour in the um, C. I didn't want it to just be completely flat blue. Um, and then I, I added a couple of colours for the sand area, for the beach area. And when I'm doing the beach area, you will see that I also try to add some um, shading in kind of the areas that would be darker by using the edge of my um, blending foam. Um, I like to do this, it's quite, it's nice and easy to do this on the Strathmore Bristol Smooth Surface paper um, because the ink moves so nicely on it. Um, I find it really easy to just add some really um, small details, some sort of like subtle shading effects and it just makes such a difference in turning it from sort of a flat looking scene to just adding in some depth. I'm not including any of the Copic colouring that I did in this video, um, simply because I already have videos that I created for the little sandcastle set and the beach backdrop which I originally coloured for the Stamping Bella website and packaging using Copic markers. So I will link to those videos in the description below if you would like to see how I Copic coloured those images. Um, in the interest of keeping this video to a reasonable length I thought that it was a little redundant 
um, to add them in here. Uh, I approached it as I always approach the Copic colouring. Um, if you've got any questions about how I specifically coloured them for this card, then please do ask. I will include over on my blog, which will be linked in the description underneath this video on YouTube. Um, I will include the details of some of the Copic colours that I used, uh, just so that you can refer to that if you would like. Now you will see I'm doing that sand with the uh, two shades of Distress Oxide that I mentioned. And I'm laying down the uh, Antique Linen first and then Fossilised Amber, which gave me quite a nice um, yellow look. And as you can see, I'm just carefully adding, just using the kind of edge, the side of that blending tool uh, behind that one sort of little mound of sand there. I'm kind of adding in some extra fossilized amber just to create some variation and just give the suggestion of depth. So you've got the suggestion of the light catching the tops of those banks of sand and some, some depth in the areas where they go behind each other. And I'm drying everything down with my heat tool, ready to move on to the next step. Um, I'm going to grab a Pitt Artist Pen in uh, white. Uh, it's a white sort of paint pen, uh, just to add some detail on those waves. Oh, and I've also grabbed a Copic just to fill in where my mask wasn't perfect and I had a little bit of a gap with the ink. Uh, and yeah, I'm going to grab that pit pen just to add a little bit of detail to the waves, um, just to, you know, make them look a little bit white and frothy, just to add a slight amount of interest. It's not really necessary, but I just prefer it to the black wave detail. I'm then going to show you that I die cut the images that I Copic coloured. Here's the images that I coloured. Uh, I coloured several of the shells so that I could include them inside the shaker as part of the shaker element. Uh, and I'm die cutting everything here using the coordinating die set for the Littles Sand Castle set. I had to um, break apart, or I hadn't actually used the dies previously, so I had to uh, go ahead and cut those all apart using the snip tools. Um, if you don't have any of those and you're purchasing coordinating dies, then Stamp and Bella do sell them, I believe. Uh, I've had mine for years. And here we are, you can see that I'm popping out those die cut images and they've cut beautifully. I do love the effect for a card like this of the white border around the images. Uh, sometimes I prefer to fussy cut, but I do like for just a card like this. It just it just looks fun um, and it definitely makes it easier to put it all together. Uh, and I thought having the um, shells as part of the shaker element would be really fun. And now you're going to see me start to assemble the card. I've cut some pieces from my favourite black sparkle card, which is from Paper Mill Direct here in the UK. Um, it's just a really pretty sparkle card. I've, cr I've cut the frame using the rectangle frames die set from My Favourite Things. And I've actually cut one using the black cardstock. And then I cut two using Fun Foam. Now, I had forgotten that having previously made shaker cards and experimented with using fun foam and other things, I actually don't love using the fun foam um, because it tends to squish out um, and kind of with a sort of narrow bordered shape like this sort of loses its, sh not loses its shape, but kind of stretches out a little bit where the foam has kind of squished down. It does kind of pop back up a little bit um, however, I left this for quite a while and um, it was still a little bit um, misshapen. It wasn't, it kind of was a little bit larger than it should have been, kind of a little bit squished out and stretched out. Um, it worked in the end, 
Uh, but it just reminded me why I don't actually love working with the fun foam for this. Um, I tend to prefer using a thick cardstock and stacking cardstock up. I also don't really like using foam tape because um, it gets a little bit um, messy and yeah, it's not my favorite. I used my usual um, Fabri-Tac uh, adhesive to glue the fun foam bits down which has created the shaker part. I've grabbed some acetate cut down to fit behind that frame and I'm using school tape to adhere the black frame to the acetate and then I'll put it on the acetate as well to adhere it um, to sandwich that between the top and the fun foam. And then I'm going to, um, once I've pop that acetate on the back of this frame. I'm going to fill the shake a bit, which is the fun part. Um, I just grabbed some micro beads and some tiny little heart shaped sequins uh, that I had in my stash. Uh, I've got quite a lot of, because I don't use embellishments that often, I've got quite a huge stash that I've had for quite a number of years, which I'm sure many of you can probably identify with. Um, so I found something in my stash and popped it in the shaker part and also popped those die cut shell images in there as well. And now, as you can see, I'm just using uh, my Tim Holtz scissors from Tonic to cut off the excess um, fun foam that's kind of peeking out from behind. This is what I was talking about with the fun foam where it kind of flattens out a little bit when you die cut it because of the pressure from the die cutting machine. Um, even though it does kind of pop back slightly, it seems not too fully, even though I left it for ages. Um, so yeah, I just trimmed off the excess so that it wasn't visible from behind the black frame. And now with the shaker element all assembled, I'm just using my Fabri-Tac glue to adhere that to a card base. And then it's time to pop the images on top of that. At this point, I also realised uh, that I had completely forgotten um, that originally I intended to stamp a sentiment on the inked backdrop, um, which obviously I can't do now because I've assembled the entire shaker portion of the card. Um, so that's behind the acetate. I also can't really stamp on the acetate with ease because I've already assembled it and yeah, there's nothing behind it to support it. So I decided um, to use one of the uh, sentiments that comes in the, I think it's the summer sentiment set from Stamping Bella. I love this banner sentiment and I've used it before and chopped it up before. Uh, I love stamping it and then cutting it apart. Here I've stamped it with VersaFine ink twice on a spare piece of that um, Bristol smooth surface paper simply because it's nice and stiff. Um, it's a nice weight of card uh, so that the banner won't be too flimsy and it's smooth so uh, it stamps nicely. So I'm just going to cut the um, sentiment apart. I've stamped two just in case I messed one up and needed an extra letter like a slip of the scissors or something. Um, so I found, I found it was going to be easiest to trim all of the bottom edges, the banner edges first, and then cut each one apart down the straight edges. I went through that process, did all that, grabbed a piece of twine and adhered that using Ranger glossy accents uh, in the corners in the middle and let that dry for a while uh, just to give my banner something to hang on, uh, give those letters something to sit on. And then I used glossy accents on the back of each of the letters to add them to the banner. Uh, I started by positioning them and working from the middle outwards to both sides, um, which worked quite nicely in terms of spacing. Um, the process was a little fiddly and I'm not exactly the best when it comes to fiddly things. I start getting a little bit impatient and a little bit fidgety. But I got through it and I was really happy with the result, so it was worth it. And I think actually this worked a lot better than my original idea of stamping the sentiment on the backdrop. Uh, when, when that was done, I then um, added the sandcastle and the little girl 
Um, I used glossy accents to adhere the sand castle just to make sure that it would stick nicely to the acetate. And then I used some clear foam pads that I've got in my stash um, to pop the little girl up so that she was standing nicely in front of the sand castle. Uh, I did all this while I was waiting for that banner, that twine to kind of dry nicely um, so that when I was adhering the letters, it didn't start moving and coming apart. And that was it. Um, as usual, I really enjoyed the process. Um, I always enjoy making shaker cards. They're so much fun um, and I really love the results. I need to do it more often and I need to remember not to use the fun foam I've got next time. Although perhaps if some of you have got more experience with using fun foam to create shaker cards, maybe it's the brand of fun foam that I was using. I think I just had some really, um, some fairly thin and cheap fun foam. I think it might've been from Hobbycraft or somewhere similar. Maybe I got it from Amazon. It was in a big bulk pack. Um, maybe there are some better brands of fun foam that work really nicely for you. Um, let me know in the comments below if so. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. As I said before, there are links to my blog post, Sandy's original Stamping Bella blog post where she created a fun shaker card. And um, on my blog, there will be links to all of the products, etc., and the stamp sets that I've used. Um, so thank you for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, if you have, please do like and subscribe and I will catch you next time. <laughs>